If our planet and your place in it seems calm and quiet, that's because you are looking at and experiencing a tiny and considerably pleasant slice of time and space. Now you're seeing the Earth's moving plates. As the Earth ages, the oceanic plates become denser. This increased density causes them to ride deeper into the upper mantle. Eventually, a section of the oceanic plate will separate and withdraw under the other part of the other oceanic plates. The friction between the plates create volcanoes and the waves of earthquakes. The world belches, splits, sizzles, breaks apart. But the planet is still fine. You just have to trust the process. Because all of these happen normally, naturally, every day. And all of these forces have given birth to an archipelago we now know as the Philippine Islands. A massive column of smoke and ash shoots into the sky. Fountains of lava flow above its crater as ash plumes rise up. Pyroclastic flows or superheated gas and volcanic debris race down the slopes at high speeds while the volcano is vomiting molten lava and belching smoke. More violent rumblings occur. For thousands of years, these events have been recorded around the earthquake-prone volcanic belt in the Pacific, known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Pacific Ring of Fire spreads across 40,000 kilometers from the southern tip of South America all the way to New Zealand. That's one big high-risk zone. The Philippines and most of its islands were created by the forces that spawn earthquakes and volcanoes at the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Earth is a dynamic and constantly moving planet. In fact, 250 million years ago, long before even the age of dinosaurs, the Earth's seven continents were all grouped together into one massive supercontinent called Pangaea. Pangaea was formed as a result of the churning and circulation in the Earth's mantle. Most activities punctuated by earthquakes and volcanic eruptions stem from this interplay where the plates meet or divide. Due to the continental drift and seafloor spreading, Pangaea broke up into the seven continents we know today. This breakup and transformation dictated the planet's history. Complex movements underneath these plates, for example, formed and shaped the very first islands of the Philippines, Palawan and Mindoro. The Pacific and Australian plates then moved inward to the Eurasian plate, causing the main islands of Luzon and Mindanao to emerge and pushing the islands of Palawan and Mindoro to move closer to the newly developed Luzon and Mindanao mainlands. The movements of these plates continued to push inward to Asia, thus creating the more than 7,000 islands of the Philippines. The Philippines has its own system of faults which stretches from north to south. From above, we can see a rupture which has displaced a road in the town of Gabaldon, Nueva Ecija. These cracks and fractures are the result of the colliding plates that run almost in a parallel north to south direction of the Philippine Fault Zone called the Philippine Fault. It has been the source of a handful of major earthquakes in the country, like the July 16, 1990 quake that shook the entire island of Luzon. The Valley Fault system is divided into the West Valley Fault and the East Valley Fault. 
The falls extend from Bulacan, Rizal, Laguna, Metro Manila, up to Cavite. As the Philippines is prone to large, powerful earthquakes, it is also not spared from destructive tsunamis. Tsunamis are triggered by disturbances at the sea floor. They displace a significant amount of seawater as faults rupture beneath the ocean. Sometimes it can also occur due to intense shaking caused by a shallow earthquake that emanates along the coast. But tsunamis can also be the result of undersea landslides or volcanic eruptions. The Philippines is positioned on a unique and sometimes complex tectonic setting that is ideal to volcanism. As it is located at the boundaries of the Philippine Sea Plate and the Eurasian Plate, both subduct or dive beneath the archipelago along the deep trenches along its east and west seaboard. An island can be of volcanic origin, that is, formed when two oceanic plates meet. The origin of the pearl-shaped island of Camiguin, for example, located northeast of the island of Mindanao, can be explained on the same line. Its sunken cemetery is postcard-worthy. A huge cross was installed in 1982 to mark the spot where the old cemetery sank when Mount Hibok Hibok erupted in 1871. Its name was derived from the kamagong trees that abound in the area. But beyond that, Kamigin has also earned the distinction of having more volcanic formations per square kilometer than any other island on Earth. Truly a hot plate. The island was literally born of fire. The island itself was formed out of different volcanoes the most popular of which is Mount Hibok Hibok. Volcanologists classify Mount Hibok Hibok as a stratovolcano dome complex, a volcano built up of alternate layers of lava and ash. It contains several lava domes, including Mount Vulcan, its most recent explosive eruption happened in 1951. Although Mount Hibok Hibok is classified as an active volcano, it shows no signs of activity today. The only signs of volcanism are the hot springs around the foot of the mountain. It's now a popular hiking destination in Kamigin Island. Reaching the summit exposes the mossy crater of Hibok Hibok's past eruptions. But the views are spectacular. All these elements make Hibok Hibok less terrifying despite its explosive history. This is Mount Pinatubo. It is part of a chain of composite volcanoes along the west coast of the mainland Luzon. The arc of volcanoes in this area is a result of the subduction of the Eurasian plate along the Manila Trench to the west of the Philippines. The killer quake of 1990 was believed to be a catalyst to the major eruption of Pinatubo in 1991. But today, the inferno's mouth is calm, beautiful after 27 years. More than 3,000 tourists climb Mount Pinatubo every month to simply marvel at its beauty.
Just like Mount Pinatubo, Taal Volcano is part of a chain of volcanoes along the western side of Luzon. Taal Lake lies within a 25 to 30 kilometer basin formed by a series of catastrophic eruptions and other geologic processes. Thousands of years ago, large-scale magmatic activity was very common in this part of Luzon. That includes the caldera forming explosion. Since the formation of the caldera, small eruptions created another volcanic island within the basin. This is what we see as the volcanic island, what Filipinos now refer to as Taal Volcano. Taal's latest eruption only proves that our land is in a constant state of evolution and its impact is lasting and life-changing. Volcanoes may allude to images of death and widespread devastation. But for those who study the Earth's deepest behaviors, volcanoes are also windows to the interior of our planet. Their activities and non-activities help researchers unravel the composition and history of the Earth's core. Such is the beauty of Daragang Magayon in Albay. Mount Mayon's iconic perfect cone is a breathtaking view that makes Albay a prime tourist destination in the region. It towers over Albay and can be seen from anywhere in the province. But while Mayon is considered the most active volcano in the Philippines, why was its perfect cone not damaged by past eruption? The crater of Mayon is constantly repaired by the lava it spews over the years. The volcano maintains its symmetrical cone precisely because of the distribution of volcanic deposits on all its sides. Intense volcanic activity can also have a positive impact on the ecosystem. Mount Canlaon in Negros Occidental brings farmers rich volcanic soil. The chemical makeup of volcanic soil makes for lucrative farming conditions, for example, for pineapple growers in the area. The fertile fields are rich in iron deposits, benefiting farmers whose lives depend on their crops. It also provides a good environment for the formation of new habitats for animals, plants, and insects. Hot springs and geothermal energy are additional benefits. The Philippines, in fact, is the third biggest geothermal energy producing country in the world. Meanwhile, metallic and non-metallic minerals such as sulfur, copper, and gold are produced from volcanic activity. In Mount Pinatubo, volcanic materials are grounded down to make lahar cement used for building blocks for construction of homes and other infrastructure. While our human lives are short, Major earthquakes and eruptions are actually quite common for our much older world. And even with our expanding knowledge, it's still a tricky business to say how much or even whether one event influences another. But through our study of volcanoes and the Earth's movement, we can get an ever-improving idea of what lies within our planet in the past, in the present, and in the future and how all of that continues to shape the natural world in dramatic ways as we stand back and watch.